Thanks, Reams. And thanks for organizing this wonderful symposium. And, and thanks to all of you. It's a great pleasure and privilege for those of us who uh, care for stroke patients to have these uh, moments when we get to share with you some of the work we're doing and hear your experience and work together to uh, improve things for the future. I guess I'm the fifth leg of the stool uh, of the table today speaking, and I'm a bit out of uh, the uh, order with everybody else because I'm going to be talking about acute stroke treatment and uh, a couple of recent developments in acute stroke treatment and how to recognize acute stroke and what to do about it. And this is important in a way that I still don't quite understand for stroke survivors uh, because studies that have looked at the time it takes for people with stroke to get to the hospital after the symptoms start. And over and over again, having a prior stroke causes patients to come later than people who are having their first stroke. I would have thought that you would have had the experiential uh, knowledge from the first time through, and but, uh, but there are lots of other countervailing forces. It's hard to distinguish what's new and what's old, and people with uh, strokes have all sorts of uh, funny symptoms and events that occur, and you have to, it's hard to tell which is the real one and which isn't, so uh, there, there are lots of reasons. But it does mean it's important for uh, stroke survivors to know about the warning signs and where we stand. Uh, so this is uh, some uh, general data about the importance of stroke. As you all know, it's uh, the fourth leading cause of death in the U.S. and the second leading cause worldwide. And there are two major types of stroke. There's uh, the blockage type of stroke where a clot blocks an artery. Four out of five strokes are the blockage type. And there's the bleeding type of stroke where a blood vessel ruptures, and one out of five are the bleeding type of stroke. And the important messages uh, are that strokes can be prevented, both first strokes or, for survivors, second and recurrent strokes. Um, the motto of our prevention program for survivors is because one stroke is more than enough. Let's make sure you have only one. Uh, and we know how to prevent stroke. We know that the key is treating standard risk factors, high blood pressure, not smoking, moderating use of alcohol, controlling diabetes, controlling cholesterol. If you have the abnormal heart rhythm of atrial fibrillation, uh, having medicines for that, and being active, getting up off the couch, and having good whole body health. And that, those together, those simple steps, prevent three quarters of all strokes. So stroke is among the most pre preventable of all catastrophic conditions. And it also now, in 2013, is a highly treatable condition for many patients if you get to the hospital soon enough. And so here's the message from the World Stroke Campaign from the past year. It's the one in six campaign. Act now. Remember, one in six. One in six people worldwide will have a stroke in their lifetime. Every six seconds, someone dies from a stroke. And every other second, someone suffers a stroke worldwide. Follow the My Life Check prevention approaches, the six steps. Know your personal risk factors for stroke. Be physically active and exercise regularly. Follow a healthy diet. Limit alcohol consumption, no more than two drinks a day for a man, one drink a day for a woman. Don't smoke, don't smoke, don't smoke. And learn the warning signs of stroke and how to take action. And then. Spread this message, share this information with six other people uh, so we can get this uh, word out. And the reason the warning signs are important is because over the last 15 years, we have developed treatments that are beneficial for the blockage type of stroke, the most common type of stroke that affects four out of five people, where a blood vessel going to the brain is suddenly blocked by a clot that formed in the blood vessel. And we have two types of treatments that have been developed. There's the uh, drug that dissolves the blood clot, tissue plasminogen activator, TPA, that works on the blood clot to dissolve it, given through an uh, arm vein. Uh, that's the Drano of the system. Give that to chemically dissolve the clot. And TPA reopens 40% of blocked arteries in a rapid time frame. So it doesn't help everyone, only about, uh, and even some of the people at, at 
uh, reopens don't get help, uh, but about one out of three patients who get TPA have a better outcome than they would have without TPA. It does have some risk. It can cause bleeding in the brain. In, uh, the bleeding in the brain makes one out of 30 people who get it worse. So uh, there's benefit and risk to it, but in general, it helps a lot more people than it harms. The other type of treatment for the blockage type of stroke are these devices that reopen the blocked artery. And there are two types of devices. There are vacuum devices that suck the clot out of the artery, have a little vacuum at the end, and then to keep the hole clear, we have this little separator that goes in and out and keeps the, the tip clear. And then there are the retriever devices. The first one of these, the Mercy Coil Retriever, was invented here at UCLA. It was the first device to approve, uh, approve to treat stroke. And the new generation is shown here. These are the stent retrievers. They have an uh, interlocking uh, framework kind of like stents that go into arteries to hold them open. But these are retrievable stents. We put them in, and these multiple struts grab the clot, and then the interventionalists pull them out. And here you see a clot that was in somebody's brain a minute ago, blocking blood flow to the left hemisphere. The stent went in caught the clot, and was fished out, reopening uh, the artery. And these types of devices open 85% of the blocked artery. So in, with these new stents that became available in the US last year, for the first time, we can reliably reopen, not 100%, but 80 to 90% of patients, we can get the artery open if patients get to the hospital in time. Now. Time really matters because every minute that goes by without blood flow being restored, more nerve cells die. Those nerve cells will never come back. So we want to reverse the stroke, restore blood flow before too much damage has accumulated. And we know from the studies of TPA looking at who was treated at 60 minutes, at two hours, at three hours, at four and a half hours, that the benefit declines exponentially, declines rapidly as time goes by. And every 10 minutes longer it takes for us to start treatment, one fewer out of 100 treated patients benefits. So how long is the time window to give TPA? You know, you hear three hours, that's true. It's not approved for use beyond three hours. But the time window really is 60 seconds. We want to give it in the next 60 seconds because more damage is going to occur if we don't, so that we're always trying to get it started faster. Now, unfortunately, we need to do a CAT scan or MRI scan before we can give it. Can't take it at home, can't take it in the ambulance. We need to get to the hospital and uh, get the studies done. Every minute that goes by without restoration of blood flow in a typical stroke in a person, two million <laughs> nerve cells die. Every minute that goes by, 14 billion connections between nerve cells die. And every minute that goes by, seven and a half miles of connecting fibers in the brain are lost. And so that's why the American Stroke Association says, with a stroke, time lost is brain lost. So patients have to know, and family members and on-sea witnesses have to know, if you see stroke symptoms, call 911 and get to the hospital right away. And often the patient can't recognize what's happening to them or can't speak or can't get to the phone. So often it's the on-scene witness who has to feel empowered to call 911 and activate the emergency response system. We have a new message for stroke warning signs that we are, are uh, releasing in the US this year, taken uh, from abroad, and this is from Britain, where it was uh, one of the places it was first developed, and that's the FAST, F-A-S-T system. Uh, when stroke strikes fast, act, strikes, act fast, and you can see the burning in the brain spreading. The F is for face, look for facial weakness, drooping of the face. The A is for arms, is the patient showing weakness of the arms. The S is for speech, is the person having trouble speaking. And if there's drooping of the face, weakness of the arm or hand, or trouble speaking, then it's time to call in the US 911 in Great Britain 999. So now stroke causes many different symptoms. Whatever the brain does can go wrong in a stroke. So there are hundreds of possible stroke symptoms. But it turns out 
The most common are weakness and language change. So to get, give people something simple to remember, we're focusing on these. People can have strokes that don't cause these. So this is not the message that will capture everyone, but it captures most of the strokes and most of the really disabling ones causing weakness and language problem. F-A-S-T, face, arm, speech, time. And what happens when you call 911? Well, uh, we have built out a system in LA and across the country to uh, ensure that there's a chain of care and intervention and recovery that will be activated. That when patients call 911, the ambulance system will respond, bring the patient to a hospital where the right treatment will happen quickly. And here in Los Angeles, this, we've trained all of the 2,200 paramedics in the Los Angeles ambulance system to recognize stroke in the ambulance. And they have a policy now that allows them to bring stroke patients directly to a stroke center hospital, not just the nearest hospital. So you can be guaranteed that you'll come to a hospital that meets criteria to provide initial resuscitative care for stroke. Uh, and they will transport patients if you have called within two hours of the start of symptoms. This isn't for two or three day old strokes. And if the ambulance can get to a stroke center within 30 minutes of travel time, it can't spend hours and hours getting there. And as Reams mentioned, over the last five years, this system has grown. In 2008, UCLA was the only stroke center in the county of Los Angeles. Uh, when we launched the routing system, there were nine stroke centers, and now there are over 30 approved stroke center hospitals in the county of Los Angeles. The idea is to have a hospital near everyone, because we don't want to waste too much time on the road so you can get treatment started right away. So that's the message I wanted to give today. Act now. Uh, Follow the uh, My Life Check uh, principles for prevention. Learn the warning signs. Be empowered to act if symptoms occur or recur. Get to the hospital right away because we do have treatments can alter the outcome, but only if they're started immediately. Thanks very much.